In this video, I'll be taking you through the principles of chemotherapy, the staple treatment of medical oncologists. In previous videos, we talked about the various tests that ultimately lead to the diagnosis of gastroesophageal cancer, and that help to stage the cancer into earlier stages versus later stages that help to categorize treatment goals into whether it's curative or palliative, and also whether in the curative setting, it's a really localized cancer or locally advanced cancer with which needs other adjunct therapies. We talked about the various treatments in these different settings from surgery to chemotherapy to chemoradiotherapy. In this video, we'll talk about the chemotherapy component from the medical oncologist. The medical oncologists, we went through their training and their specialty in delivering systemic therapies that go throughout the body, administered through various routes, typically intravenous or oral. And um, that includes chemotherapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapies. In this video, we'll move to chemotherapy. We also discussed in the how and why we get cancer, the biology of cancer, and that cancer is ultimately a problem in the DNA. And we reviewed what the normal situation is um, in, the, in this central dogma of biology, which starts with DNA, which is a double-stranded DNA helix that is composed of base, bases uh, listed here that are categorized into either purine bases or pyrimidine bases, and that have specific binding to each other, A's always to T's, C's always to G's, etc. And that this DNA will then be transcribed to RNA in a given cell, when appropriate, and that messenger RNA is then translated to proteins, which are the functional components of the cells. And these proteins are dictated by the actual sequence of code of these bases in the DNA. We also talked about the importance of cell division normally, and that this is highly regulated, as is transcription and translation in the cell, and cells will divide when appropriate. We talked about um, this central dogma biology in terms of DNA to RNA to protein, and that these proteins will form linear structures that then fold on themselves and uh, to make tertiary or three-dimensional uh, structures that, that are components of their function, and that different proteins can come together and form complexes that are quaternary structures. We then talked about what's wrong with cancer, and that cancer is an overactivation of oncogenes and their proteins and an underactivation or loss of function of tumor suppression genes and their proteins or the breaks in the system. And that ultimately the consequence of this, which again is in the level of the DNA code, is that these cells start to grow and divide uncontrollably and eventually start to invade other tissues. The DNA, we talked about how it gets changed and that every time a cell divides, it's subject to making mistakes in that copy and that these mistakes can be accelerated by problems in the DNA that are either inherited at the time of birth from one of your parents and or from exposure to various things that we know can accelerate changes in the DNA. Carcinogens or chemicals we're going to focus on here because now we're going to be using this knowledge of chemotherapies and chemicals that can damage DNA, but in a controlled manner to kill cancer cells. So again, just backing up, the DNA um, resides on chromosomes inside the nucleus of a cell. The chromosomes are tightly wound pieces of DNA unraveled, you can see here, and then you can see the bases that are paired specifically, the four bases again listed here. The DNA will unwind at the time of um, DNA synthesis in preparation to divide because it needs to make a full copy of it, of all the DNA in each cell. And so that cell's DNA will unwind and then make a copy of each strand. One strand will stay in the parent cell and one uh, copy will go to the daughter cell. And that this DNA synthesis relies on a number of different enzymes that we're gonna talk about some of them because we can leverage this knowledge to throw a wrench into this DNA synthesis machinery. So cell, uh, cells will divide through a process that um, starts with growth of the cell and then DNA synthesis and growth that we just talked about. And eventually the cell will be ready and have a full copy of all the DNA in, in uh, the nucleus. And then it'll go through a, a, a mitotic phase where the DNA and the chromosomes line up and then they will start to be pulled to become two different cells. 
what pulls the DNA apart are something called microtubules. So looking at this DNA um, uh, unwinding and copying of itself, this is the function of how the DNA synthesizes and makes a copy of itself. Again, why we get cancer is because there's problems in incorporating the wrong base into the position as the DNA is being synthesized and that these mistakes can be random. They can be because you have an error in the proofreading uh, enzymes that go back and make sure it's accurate and then exposure to all of these different things through the environment that can cause problems and in incorporation of the wrong uh, bases into this, uh, this code and therefore lead to changes that can be oncogenic. Now we're gonna be focusing on how chemotherapy works to throw a wrench into the system. And we'll be looking at a number of different uh, targeted approaches, uh, frankly, that will inhibit various aspects of this DNA synthesis. So, the background of chemotherapy, which are also called cytotoxic agents because they kill cells, they, they inhibit uh, the synthesis of DNA and the dividing of cells. That is the goal of the chemotherapy. And the reason for that is because we know that healthy cells will divide when appropriate, but that cancer cells are dividing at a much higher rate. And so Again, we're using this understanding that it requires um, DNA synthesis and copying itself and then cell division in order to be a cancer cell. And so different agents have been developed to, to, to throw a wrench into the works of that process. So there are a number of different classes of chemotherapy drugs, and they are listed here, antimetabolites, alkylating agents, topoisomerase inhibitors, and mitotic spindle inhibitors. And we'll take you through the most common ones of each of these classes that are used in gastroesophageal cancer. The first under antimetabolites are pyrimidine antagonists. And remember, there are bases, the, ba the building blocks of making DNA, there's four of them, A, G, T, C. And thymine, pyrimidine, is the one that we target with common agents for gastroesophageal cancer. These are the building blocks that are gonna be going and getting incorporated into that DNA synthesis machinery. So how does this work? Well, thymidylate synthase, which is an enzyme, TS, is an important uh, enzyme that helps to create the building blocks necessary for that one base thymine. And the, the, the end product of this thymidylate synthase taking um, earlier building blocks and creating a, a compound called DTTP. And that's an important component to be able to make thymine into DNA. When you look at the DNA chemical structure, this is one strand, and this is the other strand, and then these are the two bases that are binding to, to each other. Remember, A's always bind to T's, C's always bind to G's. And what we're talking about here is DTTB coming in to make a thymine. How does 5-FU work? 5-fluorouracil is a chemotherapy drug that's administered IV that comes in through the, the bloodstream into each cell, this is the cell membrane, comes inside the cell and gets converted through a number of different enzymes in pink here to its uh, active pr products. And these active products inhibit thymidylate synthase so that you, can, you don't get enough DTTB and therefore the cell can't have that building block to make DNA. It also gets incorporated directly into the DNA and causes damage. So this is how 5-FU is working. It's leveraging the knowledge that this enzyme is necessary to make a building block that is needed to replicate DNA during cell division. The difference between DTTP, which is here, and the product that 5-FU uh, is making is basically a decoy. This decoy molecule is being incorporated into the DNA instead of DTTB, and therefore it, it alters the DNA structure and it ends up um, affecting the cell negatively and ultimately if causing enough damage will lead the cell to die, called apoptosis. We also administer 5-FU with um, a drug called leucovorin, which essentially is folinic acid or folate. And you can see here in this biochemical uh, figure here that folate is a necessary cofactor to help this process, to help thymidylate synthase 
make DTTP. And so leucovorin is administered along with 5-FU to potentiate the effects of 5-FU. It's not in and of itself not a chemotherapy drug, but it's a vitamin in a sense that will help to uh, potentiate the effects of 5-FU. 5-FU is metabolized very quickly in the bloodstream. Um, and so hence why we give it as a continuous infusion for several days. Um, and so um, it is ultimately degraded by an enzyme, DPD. And in some cases, really rare, um, people can be deficient in this enzyme. It's less than you know 0.1% of the population. But if you have a DPD full deficiency, this could be very serious because you're not degrading the 5-FU. And so you get a buildup of this drug and, and, and it can cause um, excessive side effects and toxicities. Now there's a little bit more common in about three to 5% of the population, an incomplete uh, deficiency of this enzyme. So it's a partial um, deficiency. And so you can have increased or heightened side effects, but not to the degree if you had a complete absence of DPD enzyme, something to be aware of. Now we don't routinely check for people to be uh, DPD deficient as it's so rare, 0.1%, but there is a push to, uh, to include this into um, our algorithms of, of starting therapy just to make sure we're not missing people who have complete or incomplete um, deficiency. And this is a topic called pharmacogenomics, testing for a patient's ability to degrade our chemotherapy drugs um, to maybe preempt um, uh, this problem in those people, maybe giving a lower dose to begin with, for example. The next thing to say, I, as I mentioned, is that 5-FU degrades quickly. And so that is why it is administered in a pump and it has to be given as a continuous infusion because it wouldn't last long enough um, if it was given just as a quick IV push. So in summary of 5-FU, as we'll see with each of the chemotherapies, it is a targeted therapy, even though classically it's differentiated from newer targeted therapies that we're going to get to in later videos. But this chemotherapy is targeting a known enzyme that is important in the synthesis of DNA that is required by cells to divide, which is the definition of cancer cells that are dividing too much. So this was one of the first chemotherapeutic agents uh, de derived, and that was um, intended to slow down and kill cancer cells. Capecitabine is an oral version of 5-FU, and capecitabine is taken orally, absorbed through the intestine, and the drug is then converted to some byproducts, gets into the rest of the blood uh, system, and gets into cells, whether it's tumor cells or healthy cells, and in, that, in the cells by a different enzyme called thymidine phosphorylase, gets changed to 5-FU, and then proceeds accordingly as in the previous slide. And so that's shown here uh, in a simple version. Cape cytobine gets converted to 5-FU and then it acts like 5-FU. So it's similar to 5-FU, but it's not identical. And it, it doesn't have to be given as a continuous infusion. It's given orally twice a day, which is one of the benefits of taking Cape cytobine versus 5-FU. When we get to side effect profiles, we will see though that the side effect profiles are also slightly different and has to be taken into account when we decide on what our therapies are gonna be. The next chemotherapy drug is also a, a pyrimidine in, um, inhibitor like 5-FU and capecitabine, and it's a newer one called trifluridine tipiracil. And it's a combination of two drugs, trifluridine and tipiracil. Tipiracil is a, analogous to leucovorin in the 5-FU story where tipiracil prevents trifluridine from, from being degraded. So in and of itself, it's not a chemotherapeutic agent, but it helps trifluridine stay around longer. Trifluridine is oral. Another name for uh, this agent was uh, TAS-102 before it received its actual uh, name. And then trifluridine gets into cells and is converted to um, byproducts that are the active um, metabolite. And then again, they inhibit that same enzyme, thymidylate synthase, TS, that 5-FU byproducts inhibit um, and um, causes problems with DNA synthesis with the DTTP again. So in contrast to 5-FU, which was shown here, how it inhibits TS and it, it uses this decoy FDUTP and FDMTP, the, the TAS-102 or trifluridine comes in 
and gets um, activated to a different molecule that essentially then does similar things. And so ultimately causes problems with DNA, but with slight differences. And that's why this agent can be given after failure of 5-FU, after the cell has learned and become resistant to this drug, it, this, a, this uh, agent now being challenged with trifluridine can recapture control because it's using it in a little bit of a different manner. So that is the pyrimidine antagonist. Moving next to alkylating agents, the main class that we use in gastroesophageal cancer are called platinum-based agents. And again, these agents get into this DNA replication machinery and cause problems. And so platinum compounds bind to, they cross-link DNA strands and inhibit the ability of DNA to replicate itself and function. And there are a number of different um, chemotherapies that are platinum analogs, cisplatin, carboplatin, oxaliplatin, et cetera. One of the most common ones we use and the preferred one is oxaliplatin. They are slightly different. They all have a platinum in them, but you can see their chemical structures are slightly different and therefore have some slight differences in efficacy and also slight differences in toxicities that we'll talk about in later videos. So this, th these agents, these platinum agents come in and they bind where the stars are to the DNA and if a cell is sensitive, then, then this will cause problems. Some cells gain the capability of removing these um, drug DNA adducts and are less sensitive, they're more resistant. And so the binding of, of this platinum-based um, drugs to the DNA prevents the opening of this um, uh, DNA so that there can't be synthesis. And again, is working to inhibit the ability to replicate DNA just in a different way. And if enough DNA damage is, occurs, then the cell will die through apoptosis. So again, platinum analogs are also targeted therapies. They're targeting DNA and their replication, which again is critical for cancer cells to function. Uh, the platinum agents are degraded and excreted in the kidneys. And so uh, particularly for cisplatin, if there is kidney dysfunction, we usually try to avoid these agents because if they're not getting excreted, they can linger longer and cause excessive side effects, and they can also in and of itself be toxic to the kidneys. The next class of chemotherapies is topoisomerase inhibitors. And again, these function at the level of trying to inhibit DNA synthesis and replication. And this enzyme, topoisomerase, helps the DNA to unravel. And so by inhibiting that, we can again inhibit DNA synthesis. So the common topoisomerase inhibitor type one is irinotecan, also known as CPT11. And irinotecan is an IV drug that's, that's given and, and gets into the liver. And in the liver, it's converted to its active metabolite, SM38. And SM38 then leaves the liver, goes through the bloodstream and goes to various areas wherever there is cancer, including within the liver um, and the primary tumor and will um, enact um, its effects at those locations. So when it's getting activated here, um, it by, carbol, uh, by carboxylesterase enzyme, it's basically cutting a piece of it off, and then you get the active part, SM38. So again, where this drug, SM38, targets and inhibits this enzyme, topoisomerase, which is required for the DNA to unravel. So if you can't unravel, you can't replicate, you can't, um, you can't divide properly. Now, how does SN38 get degraded and metabolized and removed from our body? There are a number of enzymes, UGT enzymes. Uh, one of, a common one is UGT1A1. And this enzyme does something called glucuronidation, which adds glucuronide to the molecule that then it helps it get out of the body through the biliary system. And so SN38G is the byproduct that then gets excreted from the liver through the green bile ducts into the bile uh, duct and out into the bowel and then out. And so this pathway is critical to be able to get rid of this excess drug and not linger in your body. And so two things to say, one is, if there's blockage of the biliary system from whatever reason, like for example, a cancer mass compressing this, then, then the bile and the bilirubin goes up in the bloodstream. And that's the sign that there's a blockage. And therefore, as a medical oncologist, we would not be giving this agent uh, irinotecan because we know that it can't get excreted from your body. 
Another problem uh, along the lines of DPD deficiency for 5-FU is that about 10% of the population has something called Gilbert's disease, which is a faulty enzyme of UGT1A1. And so it basically metabolizes things slower than the normal uh, enzyme. And so, again, if you give the same dose of irinotecan, which gets converted to SN38, to a patient who does not have Gilbert's disease versus one who does, the one who does have Gilbert disease is not getting rid of this drug quick enough, and this drug builds up in the system and causes excessive side effects. And so, again, the pharmacogenomics testing people to see if they have this problem, and it is in about 10% of the patients, that um, you know, it is something to consider, and again, is being pushed towards um, going forward to really identify people who might be at risk of this and preemptively dose modify the drug to to prevent uh, side effects that could be preventable. So again, arenotecan is a targeted therapy. It is a drug that's coming in and inhibiting a specific enzyme that is required for DNA synthesis. Again that cells like cancer cells need even more than normal cells. The final class is a mitotic spindle inhibitor, and we'll look at taxanes, which are a class of drugs that use um, often in gastroesophageal cancer. So remember, cells grow, and they divide, uh, they um, replicate their DNA, and they synthesize their DNA, so there's an actual extra copy of every chromosome in the cell. And when they're ready, the chromosomes line up and they go through mitosis where these uh, chromosomes are pulled apart by microtubules. The microtubules pull towards the ends and each of these become one cell with one copy of each chromosome. So the microtubules, again, are important. And so we have agents that can either inhibit their assembly called vinca alkaloids, not used much in gastroesophageal cancer, or prevent their disassembly like taxanes. And so again, leveraging the knowledge that this is required, throwing a wrench into this machinery and wreaking havoc on the cells that are dividing. We have two main uh, taxanes, paclitaxel and docetaxel that are used in gastroesophageal cancer. You can see their chemical structures are similar, but not identical. And so in my mind, these drugs are relatively interchangeable and used pretty much interchangeably. Again, because of this, taxanes are targeted therapies. They're targeting this aspect of cell division. Taxanes are also excreted through the biliary system. And again, we would want to make sure that the, the liver and the bile uh, bilirubin are in the normal ranges um, before administering such drugs, because if they're not able to get excreted, then they'll build up and cause excessive side effects. So we've looked at the four main classes of uh, chemotherapy drugs, antimetabolites, alkylating agents, toporisomerase inhibitors, and mitotic spindle inhibitors. And we went through the specific ones that we use often in gastroesophageal cancer that are listed here, 5-FU with its um, um, folinic acid or leucovorin, capecitabine, the oral version, trifluridine, tipiracil, and then the platinum agents, oxaliplatin being the most common, arenotecan, a toporisomerase inhibitor, and then the taxanes. The next thing to say is that combining these agents across the different classes can enhance their effect and becomes synergistic in terms of helping to, to accomplish what we are trying to accomplish, which is inhibiting the synthesis of DNA and the cell division in a cancer cell. They can also delay the onset of resistance because the resistance mechanisms for each one of these are different uh, often. And so in order for a cell to become resistant to all the components, it will take longer than if you were just using one agent at a time, for example. And so that's why we get combinations of chemotherapy drugs. And these acronyms are usually just the first letters of the different drugs like folinic acid, 5-FU and oxaliplatin, so fulfox, cisplatin and 5-FU, folinic acid, 5-FU and irinotecan, fulfiri, carbotaxol, fulfirinox, which is folinic acid, 5-FU, irinotecan, and oxaliplatin, flot, the common regimen perioperatively, 5-FU, leucovorin, oxaliplatin, and taxotere, or docetaxel, and docetaxel, cisplatin, and 5-FU. We've even um, combined all four classes together in a study called full fox uretax, full, full acid, 5-FU, oxaliplatin, arenotecan, and taxane. And so 
as you can imagine, as you add drugs together, they are expected to and usually do better in terms of controlling the cancer, shrinking the cancer, but then um, there will be a uh, heightened risk of side effects because you're adding different components and normal cells need to divide as well. So the summary though is that these chemotherapies are targeted therapies in targeting DNA synthesis and cell division. And that as I've been alluding to, even though the intention is to kill cells that are dividing rapidly like cancer cells, some of our normal cells divide rapidly and therefore that's why we get side effects from it. And we'll talk about that at length in videos on, on how to deal with side effects from, from therapies. The next video, we'll be talking about another class of agents called tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which are classically referred to in the umbrella of targeted therapies in a newer age. But as I've been pointing out, even chemotherapy cytotoxic agents are targeted, so to speak. So in this video, I went through the principles of chemotherapy, the staple therapy of a medical oncologist in controlling and treating the cancer, both in the curative setting and in the palliative setting. We went through the different classes of chemotherapy agents and some examples of the common ones that are used in gastroesophageal cancer and the principle of combining them to get um, optimized effect of synergy between them. So in the next videos, we'll be looking at other systemic therapies that are used by the medical oncologist, including targeted therapies and immunotherapies. So stay tuned for that. Thanks.